Hi, I'm Rebecca the Prairie Gal, and welcome to my second episode of short little field trips, uh, things interesting to do and see around Chicago. Today we're at Fabian Forest Preserve, and there's uh, some interesting things to see here, so come on along and we'll check them out. There's a couple interesting features here. I'm, I'm actually on an island, and there's a lighthouse here. Uh, I guess to give ships and more likely boats on the Fox River a uh, signal that there's an island here because we are indeed standing on an island. And across the river there is actually a windmill. We're going to hike up there a little bit later. Interesting, there's no plaque or any type of history describing why this lighthouse was put here. Except that it's here. And it's pretty cool, I think. And here's the Fox River. Today is uh, November 4th, 2020. So we're gonna walk past this other monument here and then leave the island and go across the bridge. There's supposed to be Japanese gardens here, so we're gonna check that out. This monument has a, looks like an American eagle on it. I'm just sad that it doesn't have some sort of plaque that describes why it was built here. Maybe we'll discover that at, when we get up by one of those information boards. Maybe it'll say why there is a monument here. Behind me, this is looking south down the river. So the water here flows to the north, um, down through Fox River Valley here, west of Chicago, continues south from here, past cities like uh, Batavia, Aurora, and eventually dumps into the Illinois River, the Illinois River into the Mississippi River, and down to the Gulf of Mexico. So this water will be taking quite a journey. It's a very cool bridge they have here. There's also a bike path on both sides of the river. I think it's called the Fox River Bike Trail. Years ago I didn't ride a lot of it, but I used to ride a lot of miles. But today we're just walking. There's a bike up right there. And in front of us, it looks like the Japanese gardens. They have an interesting uh, tunnel here that I think we're going to adventure through. This is where we came from, from across the bridge on the island. The windmill's back across the river. We'll save that for last. And now I want to check out this tunnel. Pretty cool. So we'll make our way down the tunnel. Looks like there's some sort of a monument up here at the end of the tunnel. 
in the center of the tunnel. Oh, it's a sundial. And a plaque. The sundial is dedicated to the memory of John M. Butler, who grew up in Fabian on the Fabian estate. This was erected in 2002. Take a walk up by the house. Pretty cool arbor tunnel. I think the Japanese garden is over there. So we'll go up and check out the house and we'll hit the garden. Can we climb the hill? I think, if I remember correctly, the last time I was here, there was sort of a zoo here, and this was for a bear, a bear cage. I see a plaque that'll hopefully fill us in on some information. I like that duck. Look at that duck. That duck's pretty cool. Hey, duck. It says here, the Fabian Villa, residence of George and Nellie Fabian, 1905 to 1939. And it's open Wednesdays 1 to 4, so we'll go check it out. Well, unfortunately, it looks like they're closed due to COVID. But we can walk around the grounds and see what there is to discover here. Looks like at one time this was a Probably a fountain, maybe you could swim in it a little bit. I'm not sure. Next to the bear cage, they have like a little throne. Sort of looks Egyptian. Like an old Egyptian altar here. Again, no plaques. Kind of wish I knew what they were for. Pretty cool view. All right, we'll continue. I guess this would be the back of the house, but I think it's really probably the more enjoyable side of the house. It's the side that faces the river. So I'll have to come back when COVID's over and get an inside tour. We'll go check out the Japanese garden now. It's 
right there. Hoping it's open. That will just have to peek in over the fence. Definitely a really cool looking Japanese garden. I like that round bridge. Let's see if we can get a little closer. So the sign says they're not closed because of COVID. They're just closed for the season. So but we can see a lot from just looking over the fence. That looks very Japanese. Now this looks like a like Mount Fuji would be my guess. With a white top. In the spring I think we're gonna have to come back. Definitely want to walk across that bridge. They do have a plaque here, but it shows they are closed after October 15th, so just have to walk around and look from the outside. Ah, here's the, here's the bear cage I was thinking about. Yeah, this looks like the right size for a bear cage. I don't know what that other cage was for, but I do see a sign over here, so maybe it will enlighten us a little. Let's see, Fabian Bear Cage. This shelter actually began as a large cage built to house the Fabian bear. You can actually see a picture of the Fabian bear. It was built around 1920 to replace the first bear cage, which was wire and wood structure. The first inhabitant, Mary, was a female American black bear. Two, two American brown bears, Tom and Jerry, lived here as well. During the Fabian period, the cage did not have a roof. The spikes may still be seen along the top sides of the wall. These were spikes were meant to keep the bears from climbing out of the cage. The bears also had a large tree branch placed in the center of the cage they can climb onto and look over the estate. What a surprising sight it must have been for the passerbys. Very cool. And now you can have your lunch where the bears ate. All kinds of picnic tables in there. And here's a reverse view of the Japanese bridge. I don't know if that's a, what they call a pagoda lantern fixture on the right. If it wasn't for the leaf blowers, it would be very serene and a place to meditate. But not on this day. That's a great picture there. So I think we're going to start making our way back. We'll walk along the riverside of the Japanese garden. Some pretty colors still on the trees. This looks like one of the main entrances to the Japanese garden. Closed for the season. There's a pagoda building in there. I don't know if I'm using that word correctly, pagoda, but it just the shape of the roof definitely looks Japanese. So we'll be crossing back over the bridge and making our way towards the windmill. Okay, our turn. Okay, back towards the other side and up the hill to the windmill. Beautiful day today. It's, I think somewhere in the 60 degrees, I believe. Almost 70. Almost don't need this jacket. 
I definitely think we're experiencing our, our Indian summer right now. That's better you can actually see me. Yeah, experiencing Indian summer, which means we've had a good hard frost, good cold frost, and now we're having some warm weather after the frost. At least that's what I've always understood Indian summer to be. So we couldn't have Indian summer until you've had a frost. I'll turn the camera this way, I know it's hard to see. The sun, but it's very pretty. That giant stump. That was a big tree. So big like this. Probably a couple hundred years old. It's probably here when the Native Americans were here. I'm, and I'm thinking that the reason it's called the Fox River is because the Fox Indian tribe lived in this area. It's a nice spot of the lighthouse and the windmill. That's where we're going. Let's head up there. Great place to relax and have a picnic, read a book. It's just one of those beautiful fall days. Or you could pedal your way down the path. Well, we're getting closer. See the windmill through the trees. A few years ago, I remember they were doing some restoration work on the windmill and they had the whole entire top housing, the part that actually holds the windmill blades and that axle. They had it down on the ground so a number of years ago, so I'm very happy to see it's been restored to its former glory. Certainly starting to look much larger as I get closer to it. Oh good, and I see some information under this shelter. Get a little bit of a history on the windmill. I don't believe it's open today. I think there are special weekends in the summer when it is open and one can come visit. We'll do that next summer, I think. There's a great view over the Fox River. So here we go, here's some of the history. In 1875, two German immigrants, Louis Bacchus and his brother-in-law, Friedrich Brockman, constructed a windmill on a 10-acre site in York Center, which is now part of Lumbar. The site today is known as Knowles Park. The windmill structure came from prefabricated kit, including hand-cut beams and hickory and maple gearing. The mill was used to grind grain and corn up until the end of the 19th century, when most of the wheat moved further west. This is when they moved it. On October 15th, 1914, Colonel George Fabian purchased the windmill from Friedrich Rung for $8,000 and chose to have the windmill, though the windmill had been deteriorated badly from sitting unused for more than a decade, Fabian had dismantled it in New York Center and shipped it to its current site here in Geneva, the Colonel's estate known as Riverbank. This project took 19 months and $77,000 to complete. Most of the original windmill was discarded during the move from York Center to stay keep going the basic structure and milling gear. Some pictures of the process.
Through the years, the windmill has received several honors. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1979, and the U.S. Postal Service honored it in 1980 by selecting it to be one of five 15 cent stamps in the Windmill USA booklet. Gosh, I didn't know that. And if we were able to go inside, this is what we would see. It's pretty cool. No tours today, but free to look around the outside. I'd like to get on that platform, probably a good view up there. Sorry about the sun. Pretty big. Hard to believe they moved it. At least the important parts. A lot of fun history to explore here in the River Valley, Fox River Valley. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of our field trip today. Um, it was fun coming here. If you enjoyed this video and uh, would like to see more videos like this, please hit the thumbs the thumbs up button. They'll tell me that um, this is the kind of video you like and want to see more. Um, if you want to be kept uh, up to date on new videos I put out, please hit the subscribe button. So we'll see you next time with a new field trip adventure.